Hello and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I'm going to show you how to use shadeless materials in cycles. Shadeless materials are pretty handy from time to time. If you need to say render a environment with a background image or anything like that that already has lighting information contained in the texture or photo or whatever it may be that you're rendering, shadeless images or shadeless materials can be really really handy. They can also work really well for doing things like solid color masks if you want to um, use it as a selection mask in Photoshop or something like that. And in the Blender internal, this was really easy. It's literally one button in the material properties to enable shadeless. Well, with Cycles, as many of you have discovered, there's, you know, Cycles is much more powerful than the Blender internal engine for getting more realistic results, but it's not necessarily as straightforward as far as, you know, it's not just press this button, get that result using the node network and or the material properties it can be you know a little bit more cumbersome but much more extendable by uh, within cycles so i'm going to show you how to create a shadeless material and what i'm going to do is i'm first just going to go to file and import and i have the images as planes add-on enabled which is found under the import category and i'm just going to enable import this image right here which is a screenshot of each sheep as it exists today uh, each sheep is still heavily under development, but it's making progress. And we're just going to assume for now that, you know, we want to throw some each sheep screenshots into our scene, whatever that scene may be. And if we see this here, if we switch this over into textured or, well, no, actually not at all. Uh, right now, it's the, basically it has imported a, a plane or an image and created a plane with the exact same aspect ratio of the image and named the plane the same thing as the image. So what we not need to do is we're just going to go over the materials and you can see it's created a material, but the import images as planes is not set up for the cycles render yet. If you were to switch this over to Blender render, then you can see that works just fine. And here's our screenshot, but we're going to go ahead and do this in cycles. So, you know, if you're doing this in Blender internal, you'd simply click shadeless and then it would be shadeless as you can see there. So no speculars, no shadows, nothing, but let's switch this back over to cycles and let's go ahead and click use nodes to set this up. And let's immediately just switch the color input here to an Im image texture. And we'll just choose the each sheep image right there. So that way it shows up when in texture view or in material view. Where texture, um, I believe, shows a little bit of shadowing, whereas material does not. And now we need to make it shadeless. So if we were to go ahead and switch this over to rendered view right now, you can see that we have some... Well, right now it's pretty dark because we don't have much in our environment to light it. So real quick, I'm just going to enable under my world buttons, enable use nodes, and I'm going to just enable a sky texture. This way it's just using a basic sky texture, which when I'm in perspective mode, you can see it like that. And all's fine and dandy. But you'll notice that our material is still not shadeless. One, it is receiving noise because light is bouncing on and off of it. We want to basically say, hey, I want this to look exactly like the photo no matter what. So what we're going to do is we're going to split our view and we're going to switch this one over here on the left side or on the top to be our node editor. And here in the materials, we need to go ahead and change a few things. And oh, by the way, if any of you are wondering why my Blender interface looks different than yours as far as colors, it's because I'm using the Modo theme that is available with Blender 2.62 and up. Uh, and so if you don't have that, then you can go ahead and just switch it under themes and you'll be all good to go. All right. Um, so what we want to do to set up an emit or a, a shadeless material, this is basically going to work by telling it to be a light source or an emission source, but to not actually emit light to, onto any surrounding objects and basically be self-illuminated. The way this works is we're going to remove our diffuse shader. Then we're just going to hit shift A, add in a shader emission, and then we can just select this one and then this one, hit F, this one and this one, hit F, and that will fill the two. And now you can see that, well, it actually looks like it's shadeless, but if we were to say add in a cube right here, you can see that it's actually being, being lit from the bottom by the emission plane. Well, we don't want that because we want it to be completely shadeless. So the way that we make it shadeless and not to emit light onto any other objects is using both light, pass, light paths and a mixed shader. Light paths, which you can find by hitting Shift A and choosing input and light path, is basically a way that we can restrict light bounces within cycles for a specific material or an object to exact things. So we can say, 
um, all right, I want this light path to only reach the camera and not actually touch any other objects. Or I can say that I want this light path to be invisible to reflective surfaces or anything like that. So if we just choose light path, this inputs this, and we can see light path is camera ray, shadow ray, diffuse ray, glossy ray, etc. And if we were to go ahead and just input this in and say, all right, is camera ray pointed into strength? Well, this should actually, um, I believe, actually turn black, although it didn't do exactly what I expected. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just remove that because what we want to do is for the shade this material, we are going to hit Shift A and we're going to add in a shader and a mix shader and then just drop this on top of here. And basically, the mix shader is going to mix between the emission and any other shader that we have in there. Although in this case, we I don't think we'll need the other shader. We're just going to leave it empty because right now this is at 50% or zero is 100% just this or one is nothing because there's nothing inputted into this right here. So what we want to do is take this back to zero and say, is camera ray such that it's going to mix these two to make them visible only for what the camera can see. So if, you know, as this is bouncing back to the camera, it's only going to get this input. So if we switch this down to there, then we have a shade this material. So if we hit shift A, add in a cube, move this up, scale it down, just move it over there you'll notice it is no longer being illuminated from the bottom and all is fine and dandy. So now you could use this, oops, wrong one. You could use this as a background plane for an environment or any other thing. Or if you wanted to say, you know, you could use this same setup on just say a cube like this. We'll just scale this down, move it over. So you could just create a new material, delete this, add in a shader and an emission. Connect that there, drop in a mix shader, connect that, add an input and a light path, and connect this to there, flip these around, and just go ahead and make this any color you wish, and you have a completely shadeless material that then, you know, if you wanted to use this as a, a selection mask in Photoshop by using a select color or in GIMP or anything like that, you know, another great use of the shadeless material uh, for any kind of post-processing and things like that. So that's how you set up shadeless materials in Photoshop um, to compare, or excuse me, excuse me, in cycles, not in Photoshop. If you wanna compare these two, let's just duplicate this image over so that we have two of these. And on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just set this to be a diffuse. Whoops, except that I wanna duplicate the material. So let's just get rid of these and we'll put a shader and diffuse right here, just like that and like that and there you can see the immediate difference where this one's actually receiving light from the environment it's being shadowed uh it's receiving highlights etc whereas this one it's just it's just the image and you also notice that when i render this this becomes noise free almost instantaneously whereas this one does not and so in a more complex image or if you had lots of light bounces on this this would not receive uh or it wouldn't become noise free such as this one would uh, we'd have to let this render quite a bit longer. And, you know, obviously this is incredibly simple, but if you had lots of objects being reflected and re objects reflecting this, etc., then this would not work nearly as well. So that's how you make shadeless materials. Uh, again, very, very handy. A little, a little bit more cumbersome than in, say, the Blender internal, but it still works really well. And once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy.